Hello, this is Emil, VK3NAF, and I'm about to talk to you what's inside this box. Now, years ago, I found this little makeup case, or should I say makeup box, or makeup something, miniature suitcase, made of aluminium. Uh, here on a hard rubbish day, just sitting on the side of the road. Now, considering I don't play in a glam rock band of any sort, I have very little use for makeup. I'm also single, so I couldn't exactly give it as a gift, and even then it makes a rather poor gift to give to one significant other. Um, so I figured, you know, I'll take it anyway so I can make something in it. I thought maybe make a, um, some sort of noise maker, small synthesizer of some sort, but I thought, nay, I've got enough synthesizers. Well, can't really have enough synthesizers. So, one day, I, um, let's open this little fella up. Decided to buy a kit online um, from a fellow by the name of Lee, pardon me while my elbow slips, Sunil Lakani. Now this is a Bitex 20 board, Bitex is a little transceiver made for the um, 20 meter band, although I don't really work 20 meters much so I decided to modify it for the 40 meter band just to give myself a bit of an extra challenge because you know you can make something off of uh, instructions and not really learn much, well obviously you learn something but you wouldn't learn as much as if um, you modified it for something different. For example, um, I had to change the tuned circuits on this thing to um, for the 7 megahertz as opposed to 4 megahertz. Now, um, originally you had 10 megahertz crystals in the crystal filter and the beat frequency oscillator. Now, if I stuck to an IF of 10 megahertz, I would have had to have modified the um, the VFO or the local oscillator to work at 3 to 2.7 megahertz. Now as anyone has made any RF circuits knows that um, lower frequencies means more winds on toroids. Now I'm rather absent-minded. I have to concentrate rather um, rather hard to keep count and um, yeah I really wasn't happy with that so I decided to move the um, IF 2 megahertz higher, so I used 12 megahertz crystals instead, which meant that um, the VFO would only have to tune 5 to 4.7 megahertz, which meant that I only had to do 43 windings as opposed to 73. Now, for someone that finds it difficult to concentrate, such as myself, 43 windings is a hell of a lot better than 73. Now, um, what really helped me a lot with this was a, um, a PDF called Converting a Bitex 20A to Other Bands um, written by um, K7HKL. I don't have the information or the link in front of me but if you just pop that into um, Google and I'll say that again so you can write it down this time. Converting a Bitex 20A to Other Bands by K7HKL. Now it's got some really interesting information on there um, using a site called toroids.info so you can calculate how many wines your toroids need such as this one and that worked well for me because um, when I did my 43 turns I decided to um, check what, um, what it was um, oscillating at using my little Yaesu FT817ND and zero beating against it and it sat at about 5 megahertz so uh, it worked exactly as planned. Now another tip for you because I don't have a frequency counter I've put out an email at work asking everyone if anyone had a frequency counter because I work for an audio visual company that originally um, used to kit out studios and such back in the 80s I figured someone around will have a frequency counter and I ended up getting many replies asking me if I had actually found my Dorco meter but uh, no one had one unsurprisingly because it is the 21st century and people don't exactly build things anymore in audio visual companies so the way I matched my crystals I actually bought 10 of these things online from eBay I decided to um, stick each crystal in a little socket in the beat frequency oscillator stick my um, little Yaesu FT817 nearby and um, yeah, zero beat it. And when I um, was able to um, tune in and zero beat it, I basically pulled the crystal out, wrote down the frequency, and stuck in another one and kept on going until I found five one, two, three, four, five that were very close to each other and stuck them in there. Now, another thing I had to modify was the 
bandpass filter for the input. It originally used these things that look like IF cans. But, um, you know, I could always say that, you know, I calculated it myself, but I didn't. I'm lying. I found a circuit um, for Bitex 40 by PY2OHH and just pretty much ripped off his bandpass filter circuit wholesale. And there it is there. Basically, he sold it up dead bug style on a piece of um, circuit board, surface mounted using just standard, you know, little molded inductors that I bought. I think it was from JCar. No, I bought it offline, but that doesn't matter. You can buy it in any old place. A few little um, variable capacitors. And all I did to peak it was, yeah. Put a little piece of wire on the end, stuck it near my signal generator, took the output of um, the amplifier, I think it was an amplifier there, doesn't matter, stuck another wire, put it next to my trusty old Yaesu FT817, and um, basically tuned it around to, what was it, 7.15 megahertz, it had the... Um, you can tell I'm thinking because I'm making stupid noises here. I'm running out of words. Yes. Um, yeah, set the RF frequency generator for 7.15 megahertz and pretty much peaked it for the highest amount of signal going into the radio. So there are a few tips. Now don't take my word for it because I don't know if this thing's working yet or not because I basically haven't finished it yet. But there's a few tips for you if you're considering doing it yourself. One last thing I will say um, that is probably rather useful information. Um, I also got this Uniden little microphone for a couple of reasons. Um, I'm actually going to use it for the um, Bitex 40 transceiver. Firstly, it was rather cheap at about $18 or so on eBay from either China or Hong Kong. So it's not going to cost you an arm and a leg. And the good thing about it is it's only got a 4-pin connector, which is rather easy to interface to. All it's got, um, the only 3 pins I'll be using is the ground, also known as the common. Um, there's also a microphone in, or is it out? Depends from which end you're looking at. But there's also a mi um, yeah, the microphone in, which um, being an electric needs a... A bias voltage for it to work but that's okay the BitX supplies that anyway uh, and the um, third pin that I'll be using is the transmit which basically when you press the button down um, pretty much shorts the transmit button to ground which is perfect because the BitX uses that as well to switch the relay to go into transmit mode and just thought you know useful for you to know so that way you don't have to sp buy, um, spend a lot of money on an uh, Yaesu or an ICOM microphone just something generic with a 4 pin connector such as this will do I'll leave you with that see ya